If you're wondering what the hype is, Copilot notebooks allow us to provide instructions and ground our notebooks on content so that we can have focused conversations. Today, we'll explain how this works and how you can apply it in real life scenarios. To access this new feature, we need to navigate to the Microsoft homepage. Now to access the notebook feature, you need to have a 365 Copilot license, i.e. From the chat area, you need to be able to toggle to this work option here. That means that you have the additional license. And if that's the case, then on the bottom left of the navigation menu, you will see the new area, which is notebooks. So here we are in our notebooks area. And at Amy's Animal Shop, we can see that we already have a notebook here for Buddy, who is one of our clients in our puppy training sessions. So this is a great example of how you can use Copilot notebooks. If you are into that coaching or consulting, you can create individual notebooks for each of your clients. And we'll see at the top here that we have a chat experience. So when I click in there, we can see some history, but I can also just ask my Copilot to help me prepare for my next session with Buddy. So it's similar to the Copilot chat experience that we are used to. And if I pressed enter here, then we would be redirected to that type of a setting. But there's two key differences between this chat experience in a notebook and the chat experience that we are currently familiar with in the Microsoft Copilot chat. And the first one is that we are able to ground this notebook on files, meeting notes, and other documents. So here I have a puppy training intake form, and then I've also got the first session notes. So now when I ask Copilot information, it's going to reference this content and provide me with the information and insights that I need. Now, the second thing that makes this different to the main chat experience that we're familiar with is the ability to add instructions. So here we can define the tone or the style or the output format or even the language that we want this agent to respond in. So for example, if you had a notebook for a sales person, if you were in a sales role, then you might provide your marketing sales sheets down here. And then in the instructions, you could add like adopt the mindset of a, you know, top league salesperson. And then you're going to kind of get that sort of wording in your responses. So in the sense of instructions and files, these notebooks are kind of like agents. So we're going to dive into this chat experience and the chat a little bit later, as well as the difference between agents and these Copilot notebooks later as well. But first, let's start off with creating our own notebook, because I do think it's a lot more of a user-friendly experience than agents. So to do that, we will head up to your notebooks. So to create a new notebook, we'll go up to the top right and go new notebook. In this case, we are going to be managing a new project called Project Pause, and it is our new pet adoption initiative at Amy's Animal Shop. So after the name, we have the ability to add references. So this is going to be the data that we ground our notebook on. And the first 20 documents are your grounding documents. So you can start to type out file names and you'll pull them up in the search that way. Or you can even press this little cloud icon and attach cloud files. So here you could add files from your own personal OneDrive or even add content that is stored within a SharePoint site or Microsoft team. And you'll notice here as well that we're not limited on the types of files that we can add. So we can add Word documents, we can add loop pages, whether that's a co-pilot page or meeting notes, we can add a PowerPoint slide and so many other things like a PDF. So we're not limited on the type of content. So in our example, I'm going to attach this project plan and we'll notice it add down here. And then I'm also going to add the phase one planning meeting notes and then we can go and create and here is our notebook so as you can see it is a lot easier to get started and get set up compared to setting up agents if you are familiar with that process 
And at the bottom here on the references tab, we'll see that we have an all filter. And then we've also got new filters to filter for the different types of files or reference documents that we have within that notebook. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is a feature that is unique to notebooks and is not available anywhere else within the Copilot ecosystem yet. And that is this play audio button. So what this does is it's going to provide a audio or podcast style playback of the resources or references that you have defined within your notebook. So if you are a project manager, you can add your briefing documents and your meeting notes and all of your initial setup files, and then you can listen and get a playback of what are the key points that you need to get started on this project. You could do the same thing with an academic research, add all of your resources and your research here, and then you can listen to the podcast. So let's just click play and take a peek. Hi everyone, welcome to today's overview. So the play audio is just a great way to kickstart any notebook and get familiar with all of the data or content that you have added as a reference. So as your project or your coaching sessions projects go, you're going to need to add more resources to your notebook so that you can collaborate with Copilot and gain insights on that data. And there are four key ways that we can add content to this notebook. The first one is if we go add reference, then we are brought to that familiar experience that we saw when we created the notebook. So here we can add any of our cloud files from our own personal OneDrive or even SharePoint. And just note that the first 20 files that we add here act as grounding data for your notebook. And I know that I've said grounding a lot here, so we're going to touch on grounding in the next section. Just going to cancel out of here. The other ways that we can add our references is by selecting this drop down here. We could upload a file from our computer or we could add a link. So here you could add a web URL and then that can just provide you with a quick access to that resource within your notebook. But it's important to note that with links, these are not part of the grounding data. So that is a key difference between agents and Copilot notebooks as well. Now, the fourth way that we can add content to our notebooks is via the new page. So if we select that, then it basically brings us to a blank Microsoft loop page. And at Amy's Animal Shop, we are going to add some values for our project pause. So we'll go values. If you want, you can add a little icon and then you can even just add a cover photo if you wish. So down here, we're very much in Microsoft Loop. We've got that forward slash command. So you have access to tables and checklists and all of that good functionality. But I'm just going to paste some of our values that I've defined here. So to go back to the notebook now, we can just close out of here and we will now see our values have been added. So now if I chat with the copilot and ask it, any of our information regarding values, then it is going to be able to reference this content and act as grounding data. Which leads us to the next point, which is what does grounding even mean in terms of AI Copilot? So grounding basically just points Copilot to specific resources in order for it to learn and understand knowledge and have conversations with you. So if we didn't have any of these files down here, then Copilot would just have a conversation with us based on its general knowledge. Whereas by adding resources here, we're specifically saying, hey, these are my values. This is the project plan. And this is our first meeting notes. This is the information that I have about this project. So when I chat with you, please reference those files to help me gain insights. So now that we know what grounding is, let's take a look at how we can use the chat experience to gain insights from our grounding documents, as well as help us draft content. So in this example, I'm going to ask Copilot to outline the plan for this project. So if we press enter, then it's now going to review all of those reference files and it is going to pull up the plan 
as discussed. So this is actually really good here because in that Word document, we actually did have a plan broken out month by month. So this is how these Copilot notebooks, sorry, help us is because they help us get data from the content without actually opening it. So I could have, we'll go back into this notebook, you know, gone into this document as I think that the content that I was looking for is in there and pull up that document and reference it. But instead, Copilot is able to just give me the answers that I need without even referencing the document. So that is really cool. Now, this time, let's ask Copilot to help us draft a plan for month one. Okay. And then this time, as with any Copilot chat, you can press the forward slash. And then here we can add additional content to our chat conversation. So you could add people, files, meetings, or even emails. Now in this example, I'm going to select meetings and I am going to add these meeting notes. I actually don't think there's anything in those meeting notes, but just for demonstration purposes, you can see how Copilot can help us draft content and how we can also reference additional resources to point Copilot in the right direction. So back into the main area here, we'll just go back into the notebook. If you need to access your chats, then you can just go to this chats tab at the bottom. And then this provides a nice history of all of your former chat conversations. So the notebook organizes your chat conversations with Copilot so that you can easily reference all of your conversations within your project pause. So now I want to show you how we can tailor our Copilot conversations. So if we go up to add Copilot instructions, then here we just provide information on how we want Copilot to respond to our chat messages. So in this example, I'm a busy project manager and I don't want to read long paragraphs of writing. So I'm asking Copilot to respond in short bullet point format unless otherwise stated. So now if we save this, then when we start to chat and correspond with Copilot, then it is going to adopt those instructions and adjust its response accordingly. Throughout this video, we have touched on the regular Copilot chat experience versus the Copilot chat notebook experience. Similarly, we've also touched on some of those differences between Copilot notebooks versus Copilot agents. So if you want to learn more about Copilot agents, then you can check out this video here.